Sure, give me a hug. <laughs> I'm not loved. <laughs> hi, Sandy. Hi, Rosie. Hi, guys. Hi, Princess Rosie. I hope you hear me saying your name. You probably crunch, slurp, slurp, crunch, crunch on your ice. I ran out of all my good crushed ice. I'll get some more tomorrow. You there ain't no room. The freezer's full? I got a big bag yesterday. Oh, crap. Sure, I've got a big bag of ice at the dollar store. Now I don't got room for the good crushed ice. No, get out. Because the dollar store don't sell it. <laughs> it's just easier with my teeth to eat the crushed ice. I have so many missing teeth and my teeth are so brittle. Mommy. It's okay. We're going to continue on with um, Paul's speech today. We'll be reading Acts chapter 22 verse mm -hmm. 17 reading through chapter 23 verse 10. We'll be reading in the New International Version if you'd like to follow along. Got a hair fly in there. One of my hairs. We got a long reading today and very good reading. Yeah. I'm starting. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking to me. Quick, he said, leave Jerusalem immediately because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these people know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Do you see this? Do you see this? What forgiveness our Lord has. You may think you have done something so bad, God cannot forgive you. Look how Paul was when he was Saul. Look how Saul was. Killing God's people. The people that were closest to Jesus. Telling people about Jesus. You know, trying to imprison Peter and then people that walked alongside Jesus as his brothers. You know, trying to have them killed and imprisoned. And Stephen was killed. Stephen didn't walk alongside Jesus, but still, you know, he was a disciple after Jesus left to heaven. But God forgave him. Jesus forgave him. And... God chose him to do his work. And look what wonderful things Paul has done. So let's continue on here with Paul's speech. The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Rid the earth of him, he's not fit to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the commander ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and interrogated in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? Then the centurion, when he heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do, he asked. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? 
Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship. But I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Those who were about to interrogate him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. You know, every time something comes up, and it's with Paul about the Roman citizen thing, every time the, the thing comes up about being a Roman citizen, that just shows you what great authority a Roman citizen had back then. Because once you told them you were a Roman citizen, they dropped, dropped it just like that. If you were going to be flogged, mm -mm, they wasn't going to touch you after you told me you was a Roman citizen. And if they had you in prison, they found out you was a Roman citizen, oh no, they let you go. They didn't want people to know they had you locked up if you was a Roman citizen. The Roman citizens had a lot more um, going for them, had a lot more, you know, than the Jews and the other people. Now let's get into this. Paul before the Sanhedrin. Watch what happens here. The commander wanted to find out exactly why Paul was being accused by the Jews. So the next day he released him and ordered the chief priests and all the members of the Sanhedrin to assemble. Then he brought Paul and had him stand before them. Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin and said, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. At this, the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. You sit there to judge me according to the law. Yet you yourself violate the law by commanding that I be struck. Those who were standing near Paul said, How dare you insult God's high priest? Paul replied, Brothers, I did not realize that he was the high priest, for it is written, Do not speak evil about the ruler of your people. Then Paul, knowing that some of them were Sadducees and the others Pharisees, called out to the Sanhedrin. Because they had, because the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, I mean the, Sar the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they have a big, they believe different things. They both believe in God, but you'll see. They believe in other different things. He called out to the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, descended from Pharisees. I stand on trial because the hope of the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, and that there are neither angels nor spirits, but the Pharisees believe all these things. See, that's where they differ. There was a great uproar, and some of the teachers of the law who were Pharisees stood up and argued vigorously. We find nothing wrong with this man, they said. What if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him? The dispute became so violent that the commander was afraid Paul would be torn to pieces by them. He ordered the troops to go down and take him away by force and bring him into the barracks. So Paul was taken from the crowd by force from the Sadducees and the Pharisees and taken back, back down to prison. And that's where we're going to stop with Acts for today as they continue to fight over whether to, what to do with Paul there. Our psalm today is Psalm 2, has 12 verses. Why do the nations conspire and people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, 
Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebokes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the earth of the earth, the ends of the earth of your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. And that was Psalm 2. In our Proverbs today is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading. Let's get out our prayer books. Let's keep Sandy in our prayers. Keep praying that she has a good work environment. She has the night off tonight. Let's pray for Matt Nichols. He is in prison. Let's keep praying for Eric. He needs a kidney. And he needs to go on your prayer list at church. If you would put him on there if you go, please. Um, we need to keep praying for Macy, and she also needs to go on your list. She's got the brain tumor. We want to pray for God to take that brain tumor away. Kenny Wellman, he also needs put on that list. He needs a kidney as well, and he is on the transplant list now. Anna Whetstone, she needs on the list. She is very bad right now. She's in the hospital again, and... She isn't doing very good, and she's losing her mem her mind, and she just is not doing well. Sherman Crabtree, we want to keep praying for good health for him, and pray for a miracle for him to get a car. We want to keep praying for April Thacker and Linda Thacker. They both have a lot of health problems, and April's been really sick here lately. So we want to pray extra hard for her. Christopher Sturback. want to pray for him. Roy and Lori Mollett. They both got a lot of health problems. Barb Post. I'm not sure if she's still in rehab or she's home now. I'm not sure. I haven't heard any more about her. Joe Osborne. want to pray for him to keep staying on the right track. Josh Mollett, Vidalia Mercer, and their baby, unborn baby Braxton. We could be coming any time now. Vidalia looks like she's about ready to pop. She posted a picture last night I seen. They was getting ready to go to the fireworks. She was standing sideways in the hallway, and her stomach was about to hit the other side of the wall. So she's about ready to have that baby any time. Let's keep praying for Debbie Lee. She's got a lot of health problems. Let's keep praying for Rhonda Karshner. She has a lot of health problems and she might be having gallbladder trouble. Let's pray for Cindy Wells. She's having a lot of health issues right now. And she's going to have more surgery next month. 
Let's pray for Abby and Jimmy Myers. They both have been through a lot in their young lives, and their lives are just getting started, hopefully. Hopefully it'll be much better for them from here on out. That's what we want to pray for. Amber Brown, she'll be having surgery. Tammy Ashworth. And Shannon and her son Giovanni. Alright guys, that is our prayer request. Brother Jesus and Father, please watch over everyone on our prayer list. We know that you know their needs more than we do, Father. So your will be done for all of them, as always. Please watch over everyone watching this video or listening to it. Please let your word touch their hearts. Please let Cindy's car run okay. She's going to take us to town tomorrow. So please let her car run okay. She's been having trouble with it. I love you, brother Jesus and Father, with all my heart and soul. Amen. Amen. Alright, guys. That was everything. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.